Hello, hello, welcome back to Flute Salad. Welcome back to another analysis video. Uh, this is a, another analysis video. Um, we're going to talk about a few things we saw in the Sonic Central. Not everything, some of it we don't care about. Uh, and we're also going to talk about the IGN first hands on impression with Sonic Frontiers. Um, so this is the uh, Sonic Central we're going to start off with, uh, looking at a few bits of this. It's the uh, hands on impression of Thingy. Wow, look an intro. Central. And then we're like, oh hey, hi, my name's Ivo. And there's Azuka. Hey Azuka, how you doing, my guy? Yep, hurry up, Azuka. Come on. Okay. So we get a trailer for Sonic Origins. Honestly, I'm not that excited for Sonic Origins. I mean, we've played the games like in dance. I'll probably play it at some point. I'm not going to buy it on release. I'll pre-order it, I don't think. I mean, we've already seen the game, do you know? But... It's nice to get the uh, nice to get the trailer. So we'll we'll have a trailer. So he's running. Oh wow! Look, he's got coins now, and it's sixteen by nine, which is beautiful. Um, I like the fact it's sixteen by nine, unlike a console release. It's quite quiet. Let me see if I can turn this up anymore. It's full volume. Okay. Player Sonic. Players Tails. And Knuckles. Wow. I'm honestly not that excited about this thing, to be honest. Because games, you guys. Can you modes interest me? And Knuckles. Haha, <laughs> funny joke. Um, I like the fact you can play with games all as one. I like that. Classic, I don't know why you'd ever choose to play like that. Why'd you, like, purposely choose to be able to see less? I don't know. You still got the crushed multiplayer, the stretch as multiplayer. Boss rush is interesting. Mission sound kind of interesting. The mirror mode sounds very interesting. That's just going to hurt my brain though. Museum, so you can look at illustrations and music and things. You can see co covers and whatnot. Kind of what we expected. People are really excited about this. People are like, oh yeah, this is. I'm more excited about this than Frontiers. What are you on, right? You might not like Frontiers, but it's gonna be better than, well, it might not be better than that. The games of this are very good, but it's gonna, well, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the excitement for this. Coming this month on June 23rd. Okay. Celebrate and then, Sonic right. Can we talk about how, <laughs> for a second, talk about how annoying this is, right? For, for years now, people are like, oh, I want the Sonic Unleash either remaster or port, uh, you know, on, on current consoles and PC and whatnot. And they know that, they're aware of that, so they they announce like an upgrade, update, whatever, to the Roblox game. And what music do they choose? Coming this month on June 23rd. Celebrate Sonic Central in Sonic Speed Simulator on Roblox. I'm gonna be honest, that did get me. I heard that, and for a second I got really excited, and then my I just died. Whatever, no one cares about this. Apparently it's a good game, whatever, who cares. We've got the mobile stuff. Oh, okay. So here we have Mephilus from Sonic 06. Nice to see him again. How do they uh, call him? Mephilus. Americans, am I right? <laughs> um, wow, look, okay. So Sonic Prime, we get a new little teaser for this. Quite short, but a little something. Uh, let's watch this. Ultimate fans. Oh! Oh! I Because I know what this is, because I've seen this before. I got our ultimate fans. I I see what they did there. I see what they did there. So on it, like the animation looks good for this. Um, so uh, Sonic Prime. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. I'm not gonna lie. It's yeah, boy. And that's all we got. So pfft, whatever, you know. Sonic Prime comes soon, so nothing more. And this, they're just like, oh hey, Sonic Movie 2 is coming out soon, even though it's already out, whatever. There's toys and things. That art, that art is really nice, actually. I really like that. I like that one there, and that one there. I'm not a great fan of that one there. This, these two, though, beautiful pieces. Introducing Hype and Sonic the Hedgehog Capsule Collection. Now, I don't know who's going to buy this. Energetic designs inspired by the high-octane <laughs> speedster himself. Whatever. Of Amy Rose and Miles right. Tails. You get these first four figures things, they're gonna they're high quality, don't get me wrong. 
Um, these are just like renders, kind of bad looking renders, not gonna lie. But um, they're so much. Have you ever seen? They're like hundreds. Um, and then you see Sonic, you get Sonic to hold your controller. If you want that, that is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. The this bit, continues. I don't, Stay right, okay, I'll be quiet on this bit. The Relive the magic of the Sonic 30th Anniversary Symphony Concert live and in person. Watch iconic moments from Sonic's history come to life on the big screen alongside a full symphony orchestra with a few new surprises in store. So, uh, a few things. It said World Tour, but then it said Brazil. Is it going to do that thing where I say World Tour and it's not a World Tour? Is it, if it's worldwide, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, tour date's coming soon. They also said alongside the orchestra. So, are we, is there going to be like Crush 40 there? Is it just going to be the orchestra and they're going to be like pre-recorded or just use the existing recordings? Who knows? We'll get more info uh, later. This literally zero people in the world care about. Okay. Similar to what they did with Team Sonic Racing, we got a little, it's in the same style as well. Uh, we're gonna get one for Sonic Frontiers that's gonna be released before the game is. Uh, and here's a little sneak peek of what we can expect from it. Of a new animated special featuring Knuckles and taking place before the events of the game. We hope you enjoy this exclusive first look. Now, forward to sharing the entire short later this year. I'm going to be honest. That wasn't much of a sneak peek, I'm going to be honest. That was like one frame of animation with some lightning and some rain effects. It's nice to see Knuckles back within Master Emerald, though, and the whole, like, whatever, everything there. That's nice. God, that was loud in my ear. Next, we move on to Sonic Frontiers gameplay. Let's hurry up. Come on. Sonic Frontiers. Okay. So, here we can see more gameplay. We see it's nighttime, there's a big thing in the sky, that thing. Right, this is all 100% automated, but it looks cool. If you're going to do automation, make it look cool. It reminds me very much, this, of uh, that one stage in Sonic uh, and the Secret Rings, where you are you run on a, th it's like levita levitated ruin? It might be called, I don't remember. Um, where you basically, you, it's essentially this, and it's just the same director of the same game, so Whatever. It looks cool though. We've got a quick step section here, which is kind of boring, but you can see your reactions actually have to be quite, quite good. Boop. A lot of things. And then it opens up into an actual like battle arena. And yeah, blah blah blah. Fight the boss, kill the boss. Uh, boom, and that's that. Coming soon, 2022. So we've still got the 2022 release date, which I'm excited for. Hey, Sonic. And then that's the end of that, that's just, oh hey, you can look at more things, which you've already looked at. Next, let's move on to the uh, hand, hands-on impression. So, before we saw just gameplay, this is mostly reused gameplay, there's some a few new bits in there. Um, it's mostly reused gameplay, from what we've already seen, but it's the actual guy that's doing the voiceover is the one that played it. He's also got a Twitter, which I was going to look at his tweets, but I, uh, I forgot. <laughs> Um, I'll get them up in a minute, though. Uh, like I was explaining what he said afterwards. Um, so we're just going to go through what he says and analyse what he says and what it might mean. Okay, here we go. I'll point out when you get new footage as well. Sonic's done a lot in 30 years. He's been a pioneer of the high... I sorry, I like the fact he didn't just start it with... Sonic had a rough transition to 3D because, oh my god, I've gone insane. An Olympic athlete, a respectable kart racing enthusiast, a fighter, a TV star, and a Hollywood blockbuster movie. Oh, can I say for a second? Enthusiast, a fighter, the uh, a TV Sonic Boom TV show is actually really good, watch star, it. <laughs> and a Hollywood blockbuster movie star as well. But he's never done open world. And okay, and you can notice now, well, I've just covered it up when I paused it, work in progress gameplay build they didn't show up before, Led to a huge amount of discourse. Obviously, they're still going to be working on it, but we don't know how much. We're thinking this is probably a bit the earlier Sonic now, but we're, we're not quite sure what sort of build this is. We know all the footage was recorded on May the something, though, I think. 
I was fortunate enough well, to be one of, of the first people outside of Sonic Team to go hands-on with Sonic Frontiers, and let me just say, if you're worried about how the blue blur will fare in this unfamiliar genre, well, I think Crush 40 probably put it best. Open your heart, it's gonna be alright. Now, few thoughts on that quote. It shows that he has knowledge of other games, especially Adventure. Adventure's really good. Um, came out as like my one I'd want to play most at a moment of time or something, whatever. That's beside the point. Um, uh, so he obviously knows about Sonic Adventure, he knows about Crash 40, so I don't know if it, uh, he's a fan, I'd say he's a fan, because I don't know why IGN would get somebody which isn't a fan to do it. Uh, or, or Sonic Team would get someone from IGN that isn't a fan, who knows. Um, you know, IGN haven't had the best track record with Sonic. Actually, to show you IGN haven't had the best track record with Sonic, everyone's seen this in the world before. Uh, here we go. First we have an, an advert, though. Yeah, no one cares, mate. Go away. What about Sonic Unleashed before spending your hard-earned money on it? I, okay. It's right. a big piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. Big piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. Right, look how he's playing. Yeah, this man is not it's boosting. What's he doing? Garbage. Big. And he boosts piece of twice. Garbage. That should probably be enough to warn off anybody who's thinking about playing it, but I guess we should talk a little bit more about it, just in case you like to hear the tortured sound of my voice. Boost. Indeed, nope. it's games like this that make reviewers rethink their lives. Now, I have a theory <laughs> when it comes to Sonic games. Someone at Sega hates oh. the Hedgehog with all his might, <laughs> and he's going about trying to sabotage the franchise with these awful games. I haven't watched this, this in a long time. This is the only time, explanation that makes right. any sense to me. Push X R B A. Pretty much every decision made nope. for this game okay. was the wrong one, and Sonic ends up taking more Doesn't beating jump. than a pinata because of it. The gameplay in Sonic and is split up into three equal parts. There are daytime stages which are actually very good. Walks there are nighttime that. stages which are actually complete rubbish. And then there's also the hub city where you do a lot of exploration stuff. And that yep, farming okay. that is mostly... I just want to see the, the fun bit. hopes will be brutally dashed <laughs> later on, but never mind that for now. The daytime Push sections a. aren't perfect by any means. He did, oh my god, he didn't home attack mode. Did jump. Did jump. Boost three times in a row for some reason. And it's just a lot of trial reason. and error gameplay that can get a little bit... Jumps over a thing and dies. What is wrong with... Okay, that's beside the point. Anyway, let's go back and um, watch this. Got sidetracked a bit there. The first thing that struck me about Sonic Frontiers was how uniquely somber and serene it was right from the outset. After flying into a wormhole with Tails and Amy, Sonic finds himself separated from his friends and all alone on an isolated island. With so we get a little bit of uh, plot uh, uh, things there. So Sonic flies through a wormhole, is separated from Tails and Amy. They both go in there, so I assume maybe you're going to go rescue them or something. I have also just seen there's a spring there. What is the purpose of that spring? Who knows? Nothing but an AI voice guiding him to collect the Chaos Emeralds. Nothing but an AI voice guiding him to collect the Chaos Emeralds. Now, that could be from the actual trailer. They, they released a CGI one where he goes, Sonic, over here. That could be that voice. <laughs> there's also been leaks. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> I just died. There's also been leaks saying there's like a ghost girl or something that's there. Maybe that's the AI voice. Who knows? It reminds me, it's Shara. I'm getting some kind of like Shara energy from Sonic Secret Rings. There's no one for Sonic to Again, bounce off of. Same director. No energetic Crush 40 soundtrack. No energetic Crush 40 soundtrack, it was kind of sad. I hope we get the Crush 40 soundtrack later on. This wide open fields as far as the eye can see. There's an air of mystery in Sonic for Tears, and it's a vibe that's driven home even further by the beautiful yet minimalist piano melodies that accompany Sonic as he explores the island. So, yeah, I hope that uh, as it progresses and you do more things, you get to new islands, the music gets more intense, whatever, I hope that. But we'll have to wait and see. And in this bit, they just show gameplay we've already seen without any audio. I don't know why they did that, but whatever. All of this is a very intentional choice. I asked Sonic Team head Takashi Izuka to describe how the tone of Sonic Frontiers differs from previous Sonic games. And he said, past games in the Sonic series have taken different tones depending on their stories and themes. This time, these mysterious islands are the game's major setting. That's why our artists have worked hard to create a mysterious mood. Of course... Uh, and I'm gonna say, they succeeded in that. There is definitely a mysterious mood. The artist did an incredible job. You know, this game is beautiful. They did a very, very good job. Um, of course, the... How it plays is a different manner entirely. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, the they, they did a good Sonic job. The is the shift from purely linear levels to a huge open world where Sonic can freely run in any direction. But Sonic Team doesn't like to use the term open world to describe Sonic Frontier's gameplay. 
instead referring to its style as being open zone. Open, open zone. world games like Zelda or other AAA games fundamentally have RPG or adventure worlds. For Sonic, the core here is a 3D action game. Our basic idea was to have that take place in an open space. What sets Sonic Frontiers apart is this different approach to an open game world. Now, honestly, I don't know what he's talking about there, because he, that's literally just described what an open world is. Basic idea was to have the game take place in an open space. That's not a, that's not a different approach, that's just an open Having world, but whatever. Sonic Frontiers for about four hours, so we know he's played four hours, so you know it's already longer than Sonic Forces. It's easy <laughs> to see what Izuka-san means. Sonic Frontiers' open zone design is very different from any other open world I've played. It's a giant playground. Every few feet, there's a bumper spring that bounces you like a pinball between five other bumpers before putting you on one of the many grindable rail tracks. So it's automated. But it looks cool, so pfft, whatever. Or That's a, a speed ramp that potato potato. Uh, these things I see all the time. I only saw one before, but there's loads of them. Uh, and we'll bring that up again later. Sets you on a completely different path, leading to some other collectible or reward. Or a line of rings that you can light speed dash into. It's light speed dash confirmed. I said there'd be light speed dash in the first little like 30 second teaser or something. It might have been that one. It might have been the longer one. I don't know. Ha ha ha. Praise me. I was right. Essentially, they've taken that core appeal of every. There. Also, there. Oh, that's a light speed dash ring if I've ever seen them. Sonic level having multiple paths that I eventually loop back around to the main one and applied that to these giant non linear open zones. One thing that has to be noted is that very few of these elements are built into the environmental design, meaning that rails, platforms, boost rings, and so on are just inexplicably floating in the air all around. With so yeah, he brought that up, and that's honestly, that doesn't bother me at all, that's not a problem. I think it looks cool, to be honest. Um, I've seen a lot of people complaining, I personally think uh, having a thing floating, I think it looks cool, whatever, but that, that's, a, that's a, you know, a personal thing. Which isn't totally unusual for a Sonic game, but it feels especially jarring in Frontiers in particular because of the frequent and sudden pop-in of these objects and the otherwise very naturalistic art style. So he's actually just doing like a review of the game, to be honest. He's just doing a straight-up review. Of course, it's worth I like that, because he's being honest. You know, he said, he said, these things are good, these things are bad. These things are good, these things are bad, which I think I like. Realizing that this gameplay and the version that I played were from an early build. So... The fact he said he's emphasizing that, we don't know how early this early build is, because I think he said it was, I don't know if he said when he played it, but we know the footage uh, was actually recorded by Sonic Theme, and that was recorded in May, apart from some bits were on June 1st, I don't know. Um, now the reason for that is it's possible, there's two, there's two things I think are possible. One, they wanted to capture footage and gain, like, like get this person to play a more finished but early build, like a more stable build, but an earlier build, rather than a later build, which isn't as stable. Um, well, yeah, which isn't as stable. You know, it might look better, it might play slightly better, but it, it, you're going to run into more issues, I think. Maybe, like, a few crashes or something might occur. So I think that is a potential way. And I think another reason could be... Uh, that's Sega. I don't know. I don't know if this will be a Sonic Team thing. Sega or Sonic Team? I'm assuming Sega though. Saw what happened with the original movie design. I saw how everyone moaned about it and got it changed. It is entirely possible. I'm not saying this. This is what happened, but it is possible that they're trying to kind of like replicate that again, and they're purposely showing this early footage to so people will be concerned about it. They might be worried about it. They'll be complaining about it, and then later on they'll be like, "Oh wow, look at this! Look at this better footage. This newer footage." Um, we don't know how much, if that's, like, we don't know if that's true, that's just purely speculation. Uh, and if that's the case, we don't know how different it's going to be, how similar it's going to be. They did release more screenshots, which we're actually trying to find in a minute, which definitely show a newer version of the game. Uh, actually, I probably could probably find that on Twitter when I'm trying to find the other things. Anyway. But this is definitely an area that I would hope to see improvement in the final version. So, wait, what was he talking about? The pop-in, was Bill. it? But this is emphasizing that this gameplay and the version that I played were from an. Hold on, wait. What was he talking about? And sudden pop in. Oh, the pop in. Yes, he's talking about the pop in. naturalistic art style. Which is what everyone had a problem it's with. Worth emphasizing that this game. And I have the problem with as well. I definitely mentioned it in the other videos. Play and the version that I played were from an early build. But this is definitely an area that I would hope to see improvement in the final version. So I like that he's being that, honest. There are also a wide variety of puzzles and challenges that are littered throughout the zone. I wouldn't really call these puzzles, uh, I'm gonna be honest, or challenges, but whatever. Completing them is how you Maybe it gets harder later on. Cover sections of your map. Most of so, you, are so you complete the challenges to unlock sections simple, of the map, which we actually see here. To orient the statue the correct way, quickly hop back and forth this is new footage. Tiles, 
So, he said to unlock bits of that, I assume way. you just step on one, do all of these, and it'll give you some sort of grind rail, or like a bounce pad, or rings, or something you used to get up there, I'd imagine. We hop back and forth between colored tiles, or use Sonic's new side loop ability to draw circles around circles. He calls it a side loop. Now, we've always called this, and it was said in the leak, there was a spin cycle. It's possible that the name has changed from spin cycle to side loop later on. I personally think spin cycle is a better name than side loop, but whatever. I'm probably going to call it the spin cycle. When this game comes out, I'll do a few streams on it, I'm sure. And I'm going to be calling it the uh, spin cycle. Environment ...to interact with them. The best ones, though, are the races against the clock where you have to get from point A to point B in a limited amount of time. So he says his races, which is, you know, that's a good thing. Rather than just running around, you have a thing. You could start a, a race to get from this place to this place because it's open world. Everyone's going to take different paths. I hope this is relatively challenging. I hope that it takes, like, two attempts to do that. I don't want it to be, like, impossible. You spend, like, 500 attempts to do something because that just won't be fun. Um, yeah, so th uh, that, that's good. That's good. That's, that's a good sign. As actually, there'll be things to do. Uh, in the open world, and uh, the reason I mentioned the hourglass looking things earlier is because I reckon you'll probably hit them and it will start the race. Maybe you go from hourglass to hourglass, who knows? Um, whatever. The openness of Frontier's level design makes straightforward races like these a ton of fun. Because you have to try and improvise a path no. to the end, that no. might not be immediately obvious. No! Imagine if manufacturing automation was simple. Intro Sonic Team? Be like, oh my Producing god. Invention. <laughs> Oops, I'll pause it. <coughs> okay, Sonic 2 tricks, here we go. So he's talking about combat here, I think. I don't remember. There are some exceptions, but combat in traditional Sonic games Eel. generally Sonic isn't forces. a thing that goes much deeper than jumping, rolling, or using a homing attack into enemies at the right time. That changes in Sonic Frontiers, which now has you fighting all sorts of wandering enemies and mini-bosses using an all-new array of incredibly flashy attacks. He said all sorts, which gives me hope, because we only saw like three, I think, types of enemies and one boss before, and now we've seen the other boss, which is the Sky one. So, I, I, you know, I'm hoping we get we get more enemies. He said, oh, like a variety of, I don't remember what that was, that's a minute ago, whatever, I'm talking really fast, I'm like, oh, nah. It's not all style and no substance, though. It's not all style and no substance. Sonic is able to quickly dodge using the bumper buttons on the gamepad, and by pressing them together, he can even parry attacks with the right timing. So we get parry attacks in this, which is nice. The homing attack also feels much more powerful, landing with a ton of impact and keeping Sonic stuck to his enemy, allowing for a flurry of follow-up strikes. Which is good. One of the things I really appreciate about the combat from what I played is that there are usually multiple ways to deal with specific enemies. Which is like, good. for example, this guy, who has an impenetrable shell that he can expand into spinning blades and throw at you. One way to deal with him is just to carefully time your homing attacks so you don't get hit by the blades. But if you do that, the window to damage him is small. To increase that window, you can either parry the blades and knock them away right before they hit you, or you can even use Sonic's side loop ability to encircle the enemy, which causes the shell to go flying upwards. Which is good! Different ways to take on enemies, I like it, you know? Defeating these enemies will reward you with EXP that you can use to purchase new skills from a skill tree. Skill tree confirmed, so we know we're going to get more upgrades, whether that be improvements to the spin cycle, or, or more speed, maybe get a roll-up one, wishful thinking here, uh, um, like, a, yeah, uh, combat, you get new combat ones, which, which yeah, I think, I think this is a minute. Nice of power progression, even in just the relatively short amount of time that I played. So he said four hours is a relatively short amount of time, given Sonic Forces took three hours to do the whole game, that's a good sign. Some of the later skills that you can get are just unbelievably cool. Unbelievably cool. And it's super satisfying to see Sonic Team experiment with different ways that Sonic can attack enemies beyond just spins, jumps, and bumps. Now those attacks that should there, we don't know how late in the school trial they are, whether they're early, whether they're really late. Maybe they gave like a fully upgraded Sonic, which is what I said, but then it kind of looks a bit empty for a fully upgraded Sonic, whatever. In addition to these smaller enemies, there are also a handful of enormous world bosses that I had to contend with. These are new- So he says a handful of them, and we only get to see this one, and we saw the other one in the gameplay reveal at Sonic Central. So, uh, we're obviously going to get multiple variations of enemies, that's going to be nice. Shadow of the Colossus-esque in their scale, with one in particular against a beast named Osura, requiring Sonic to bait the Titan to slam the ground, and then boost up its arm in order to reach the weak spots on its head. So we know this enemy is called Asura. It's Osura or something. It's a vicious boss battle, far beyond anything I've seen in the Sonic series to date, but- Man hasn't played Sonic 06 or Sonic Unleashed, uh, or Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic and the, well, kind of a part of Sonic, it's whatever. It's also the part of the whatever. game that needs the most work. 
You see, he's being honest, and I like this. And he would have told this to Sonic Team, and they can enact on it if they have time, which is good, I like it. Far too often, I'd fly off the boss's arm without knowing why, or I'd get to the top and for some reason lack the momentum needed to actually reach the head. He said the M word, but I think that's just a general use of the word momentum, as in, like, talk about airspeed rather than talking about, like, actual physical momentum, because we've seen there's hardly any momentum. There's a bit of momentum, but really not much. Sonic must hunt down and def this is new, uh, Kipler here. Reason, lack the momentum needed to actually reach um, the so we'll go through this slowly. So he Sonic. hits this, I've seen a few people complaining about this. He hits this, then hits the red one, which sends him back. It sends him down that way. And then he goes up. Now, we don't know how he goes up, whether that's just the thing running out, or if he hits the other booster, which sends him up into that one. And then he goes down, and then flies off the edge. And he's just running in the air for a bit. Uh, which looks a bit weird, but whatever. But this bit, this bit, right, is clean. ...in order to collect portal gears. Oh, look at that. That was sick. That was sick. He's got, like, a little, a little, whoa, animation when he gra he can grab the wall. Look how cool that is. Boop. Whoa. Gears. Very nice. Okay, he's telling us about the cyberspace levels now, so I'm going to shut up. Reach the head. Sonic must hunt down and defeat these bosses in order to collect portal gears which open up portals that lead to bite-sized linear stages, done in the style of previous Sonic games. It says bite-sized stages. How long is bite-sized? We don't know. Uh, there's a leak came out a while ago, which is looking to be true. It said there's 28 stages, so maybe like a minute long each. Hope I'd hope for longer stages. Uh, but a minute long each, you know, that's half an hour in the game. We don't know. We don't know how much or how little there is going to be. I'm hoping I'm hoping they're quite long. I'm hoping they're like two minutes each. They'll give us an hour, you know, and then we go back through and play our favorite ones, whatever. At least nice two minutes, I'm hoping, but I doubt it. New styles. These classic levels each come with a handful of optional goals, like being the level under a certain time, collecting all the red rings, and so on, with each goal rewarding you with a vault key. So you do, you see, so you, be, um, you beat the stage, you get a vault key, I guess you get all the red rings, you get a vault key, and you get, under a certain time, you get a vault key. Maybe, so I guess that's kind of like taking the place of ranks, maybe you will get ranked on the stages, but I think that's kind of taking the place of, of ranks. Which are needed to unlock the coveted Chaos Emeralds. Which are needed to unlock the Chaos Emeralds. So you do, so you, here's one of the gears, we saw them before when they attack the feet, you get a gear. So, uh, you beat the bosses, you get gears, you're going to need a certain amount of them to get into the levels, and you do the certain amount of things in the levels, and you get a Chaos Emerald, and then, yeah. Sonic Frontiers is an exciting new step forward for the Sonic series into Uncharted territory, and based on my time with it, Sonic Team seems to have hit upon a winning formula. Which is good! There's cert here, he, here he's gonna get a cog when he attacks the foot. At least still work to be done before it's released during the holiday season. Being honest, I like it. There's a lot of distracting pop-in, there's a fair amount of bugs still left to be squashed, and the big boss fights could do with some tweaking. But ultimately, my time with this early build answered the one question I had on my mind. Will Sonic's one-of-a-kind gameplay translate into an open world? The answer is a resounding absolutely. This gives me hope, you know? This gives me hope. This actually, this is, they should have shown this before they showed anything else. Because this, I've seen from people, th this has got people's hopes up more than anything else they showed. This game is suffering from, like, the worst marketing in existence. Thanks for watching, and tune into IGN for more Sonic Frontiers coverage as part of IGN First. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN. So we'll be looking at other uh, stuff later on. Uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Yes, that's it.